What is going on guys? In this video, I wanna to talk to you about the DynamoDB Get Item API. Uh, I'm gonna to talk to you about what it is, why it's useful, and then gonna show you a practical example of how to use it in Node.js with JavaScript. Um, so Get Item API is probably one of the most common APIs that you're gonna be using if you're working with DynamoDB. Uh, it's especially useful because this is your basic like get item by ID operation. Uh, so for instance, if you have like a transaction ID that you know of and you wanna retrieve the row, you would be using the Get Item API and providing the uh, value that you're looking for in that call. Uh, so it's a very, very simple API. You only really provide the, um, the column that you're looking for, sorry, the column name and the uh, value of the row that you're looking for as part of the request. There's some other parameters as well, but uh, we'll get into that in the example section. Uh, you can also set the consistent read here to true and false. Uh, consistent read just ensures that if you if you set it to true, it means that your data is going to be completely up to date when you get it back. Uh, if you set it to false, then there's a chance that your data may be a little bit stale. Um, so if it's that if that's okay for you in your use case, then feel free to use this as false. Um, just be aware that there's some um, issues with setting it to false because you can get that stale data. Also keep in mind if you're setting it to true, you use additional uh, RCU capacity or read capacity units. Uh, so that'll mean it's more expensive. It actually uses double the capacity. Um, so let's go into the example now of how to use this thing. Um, so again, this is in Node.js. And we're setting up a params object here and we're saying the key that we're looking for, uh, we want the key to be the artist column and the value that we're looking for is Acme band. And um, the range key in this example would be song title and the value of the range key would be happy day. Uh, so let me explain to you why we're providing two different things here if it's not clear. Uh, so in DynamoDB, in terms of your primary key, you have two different options when you're setting up your primary key. Um, you either set it up just using the partition key or you set it up using a combination of a partition key and a range key. So if in your table you're only using the partition key, then you only provide the details of the partition key. You don't need to provide this stuff because you don't have a range key. But if you're using a setup where you have a partition key and range key, as we are seeing in this example, this is an example where the table has partition key and range key, we need to provide both of these values because the combination of the artist and song title is what constitutes to the primary key. So it's a, in, in essence, a composite key if you come from SQL land. Um, also some additional properties, we obviously need to specify the table name, it being music in this example. Now, uh, in terms of actually calling the API, we just use the dynamodb.getItem um, uh, function and we provided the parameters that we just specified also a callback function with uh, error and data that we'll, re we'll receive back and then we're just logging out if it's an error and logging out if it's a success and then here we see an example of the payload that we received back uh, so we're just getting the entire object back and you can see here song title is an additional um, property of the row that we got back so you know if your object has a bunch more um, columns in it then you'll get all of those back as well um, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, don't forget to like it and subscribe so that you don't miss out on my next one. Uh, and I'll see you next time.